Sheila Walsh calls it a story with more twists and turns than the wildest roller coaster ride. Bonnie Floyd knows that to be true because she had to live it. And it all started with an unexpected phone call Bonnie received more than 20 years ago. Bonnie Floyd's nightmare started in 1994 at six o'clock in the morning. She answered the phone and learned her parents who were sailing in the West Indies were murdered along with two others in cold blood aboard the yacht Challenger. Two years later, the quadruple murder trial began. Closure and justice were about to be served, or so she thought. Bound to a Promise tells the true story of love, murder, and redemption, and how Bonnie found peace in the midst of tragedy. Joining us now is international speaker, author, and Bible teacher, Bonnie Floyd. Bonnie, welcome. It's so good to have you with us it today. It is wonderful to be here. What a story you have here. Let's start a little bit with that phone call that came at 6 o'clock in the morning. I mean, this happened right at a point where your dad's relationship with you was, was beginning to flourish. Mm -hmm. and, and through divorce and just life and time, you all had kind of parted company with each other, not so much antagonistically as just it happened. Right. So this call must have been, on, it would be devastating, period. But then to have been building this relationship and have it happen, tell me about the call right. and when it came. Well, the time apart was because they had sailed around the world for seven years. And so this was your father and your stepmom. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then when they returned, God just began to just grow our relationship. Yeah. And we couldn't have been any closer at the time. Yeah. And I had become a Christian while they were sailing and I couldn't wait to share Jesus with them. And, and so they had been growing and growing in the Lord, but never accepted, you yeah. know, never prayed the prayer. And so when I got the call uh, that they had been murdered, I was told that they had been murdered in their sleep. Mm. And so I, and my dad had promised me, had made me a promise yeah. just six months before that if he ever got into a position that he feared for his life, that he would call on the name of Jesus. So when this happened and you get this terrible phone call and your, your dad and your stepmom are now no longer in your life and you feel like they came to that end without ever knowing what was going to happen to them, what did you feel spiritually? Because you had done what you felt you were supposed to do as a follower of Jesus. You had said, here, do this in an emergency, yes. do this. What did you feel? I was devastated. Mm -hmm. And, but then I later found out that they had not been shot in their sleep, but yeah. they had actually been bound and gagged for hours and tortured before they died. And, and that's, that would seem to be such torturous information. Yeah. But for me, I fell to my knees in praise and thanksgiving because it bought them time yeah. to it, keep their promise. The promise was, was then enacted. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, that would be such devastating news to most people to hear that. But for you, because you loved them so much and wanted to know that they had found mm -hmm. salvation, mm -hmm. it was the key. And you had shared your faith a lot with them. Yes, I had. Not just a little. That's, Not just oh, a little. Yes. So they surely knew at that point. Bunny, how did you... Um, you know, your dad meant so much to you. From the time you were a little girl, you were a daddy's girl. I mean, how did you rise out of the ashes of this? Well, I first had to fall into the ashes. Yeah. I was at a very low point in my life, and I had nowhere else to look but up. Mm. And people had been telling me about the Lord. God was placing people in my life, Christians in my life. And uh, and so I prayed one day, and I, I had called out because there were people, there weren't just Christians in my life, but there were also other religions in my life mm -hmm. that were also telling Vine me, and they would your... use the name of Jesus. And yeah. so I prayed out to the one true God and asked him, don't let me make a mistake. Yeah. yeah. And so it was just a few weeks later that I prayed and God showed me mm -hmm. that his true self was yeah. Jesus Christ was his son. And there was such a, um, you're so candid in the book about the restoration of 
your personhood under Jesus. You know, you had you were searching for love in all the wrong places because of losing your dad, um, not in death, but just in distance right. as a young person. And then when Christ came into your life, I mean, everything changed. But even with your husband, you share about meeting him mm -hmm. and the family and, <laughs> yes. and all of that. Learning to accept yourself when you know you've made mistakes is hard for a lot of us. How did God work that out in your life? Well, I just began a love relationship with the Word of God. Yeah. And I believe what it says. I know that sounds so simple, but serving God isn't difficult. Mm -hmm. And I believe what it says. And 1 John 1, 9 says that if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. And so I was free yeah. from everything I'd done. Did later on in this story with your your dad and your stepmother, this horrible murder scenario, you actually, when this went to trial, felt compassion for one of the murderers who was there. Did your did God's forgiveness of you play into your being able to find compassion for this man? Honestly, I went to the prison because God spoke to me during the trial. And I was having compassion for him, and I didn't want to feel what yeah. I was feeling. And so I excused myself and went out onto the balcony of this courtroom. And I asked the Lord, what's happening in here? And he yeah. said, what you're feeling is my compassion for him. And I said, what do you want me to do with this? Yeah. And he said, I want you to go to the prison, and I want you to tell him about my son. Wow. And so I went to the prison as an act of obedience I did not walk into that prison to tell him, Donaldson, I forgive you for what you did. I was going to go in, be obedient to the Lord, tell him about Jesus, and, and get out. And get out. But God had another plan. So what happened? So he was so sorry for what he did. And he kept telling me how sorry he was. And he said, I didn't, I didn't actually pull the trigger. And I said, no, but, but you bound and gagged them with black tape. And there's a price to pay for sin, and your price is 15 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so then I, we just prayed, and forgiveness just flowed. I, I think that yeah. I didn't. Forgiveness came in my act of, of obedience. obedience. Yeah, boy. that's that's when it happened, and I was able to pray with him and lead him to the Lord. And yeah. and now Donaldson is, he's my brother, and I love him. That is so hard for people to imagine, but you have just spoken such a truth that when we trust God enough to be obedient in the hard things He asks us to do, there is a freedom that comes with that that's beyond measure. You and Donaldson are actually friends. We are very close, and God has brought me back to the island of Antigua and Barbuda and just this year, wow. and an amazing event happened where the entire island of Barbuda came and uh, asked me, I preached, and then they asked me to forgive them for what they did to my parents, and then asked me after I forgave them to pray and ask God to lift the curse that has wow. been on the island for 22 years. Wow. Everything that existed uh, 22 years ago now lies in ruins. Anything that, that has, has started has been abandoned. There has actually been a curse from the shedding of innocent blood 22 years ago. Wow. Well, this is a package totally wrapped up and tied up with a bow at the end of God's goodness mm -hmm. and grace and mercy and, it is. and fresh beginning. It fresh is a fresh beginning. beginning. For you, for Donaldson, for the, the island. island. Yeah. Yes, I absolutely. Mean, restoration personified. It's an amazing story. It really is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Watch for it. Somebody's going to do this. Uh, Bonnie, we just thank you for being here. Your book is, is quite amazing. There's so much more to her story. We've skimmed the surface. You can find out by getting her book. It's called Bound to a Promise, and you can get your copy by going to CBN.com. We'll tell you how to move forward with that. It's a wonderful story. Thank you so much. Thank the story you for of having redemption. me. Mm -hmm. I love the 700 Club and have for many years. So <laughs> It's That's a blessing wonderful. to be here. Thanks, Bonnie. So nice to have you with us.